What's going on everyone, Brian Matij here. And in this video, I wanna start with a story. So several years ago, I was out photographing some waterfalls with Nicole uh, and I was just shooting, you know, with my Sony camera and she was shooting with her Fuji camera. And a lot of times when we go out shooting together, one of the things we'll do when we take a break is we'll kind of compare our photos. Uh, I'll show her the photos on the back of my rear LCD and she'll do the same for me, just to see, you know, how we approached a scene differently. Now, I remember, I will never forget this. We were sitting down and I was looking at her photos and even though we were at the same place at the same time, same weather conditions, same lighting, when I looked at her photos, they just looked so much better. And it wasn't until I asked her, because at first I didn't know if I should bring it up, but I was like, why do these look so much better? I didn't think that the Fuji LCD, the actual display itself would be anything worth talking about, you know, especially compared to a Sony, but it wasn't anything to do with the LCD. What she told me was that she uses these things called picture profiles. Now, depending on the manufacturer of the camera that you're using, it might be called something else. So for example, Sony calls them creative styles, Canon calls them picture styles, Nikon calls them picture controls, and of course Fujifilm appropriately calls it film simulation modes. And it got me thinking that this is probably one of the most underrated, probably underutilized features, in my opinion, of a camera. I don't know many people personally who actually use these kind of creative styles. Now, I'm a Sony shooter, so I'm gonna be using kind of Sony terminology here, but Again, make sure you check out what your camera manufacturer calls it. And I wanna show you why I think it's something you should consider. So I know this is gonna sound kind of woo woo, kind of like out there, hippy dippy stuff, but I am a strong believer that inspiration drives inspiration. When I'm out shooting and I look at a photo that I just took on the back of my screen, if it's something that really excites me, it's gonna kind of get my creative juices flowing. That's just the way it works with me. And I'm sure it works with a lot of people out there as well. So when you apply a creative style or one of these picture profiles, what happens is you're applying a look that's been kind of designed by the manufacturer and you have some controls there. Now, when you go through it, what happens is if you have a creative style turned on when you're taking photos, that style will be applied to one of two things. In Sony's case, it'll either be applied to the preview if you only shoot raw. So when you shoot raw and you take a picture, uh, a small little JPEG is created. That's the preview. That's actually what you see on the back of your screen. That creative style will be applied to that preview. Or if you shoot raw plus JPEG or just JPEG, that creative profile will be applied there as well. And that's something to consider. So let's say if you're like me, I often will send photos, the full res JPEGs, because I shoot raw plus JPEG. Uh, which is a setting that I, I strongly recommend uh, personally. I just like it because on Sony's system, if you do shoot RAW plus JPEG and you want to send the JPEG from your camera to your phone over Wi-Fi, it'll send a full resolution JPEG. As opposed to if you just shoot RAW, it'll send just the small preview. And so when you send that JPEG over, if you have a creative style applied, it's going to send that photo with that style. It's not going to be uh, a RAW file or what your JPEG would look like if you didn't have a creative style turned on. So what I wanna do first is I wanna show you how I access the creative styles. Now, again, I, the video that I took with this is using a Sony A7R Mark III. So the menus can be different from the A9 or the A7S Mark II or a Fujifilm or a Canon. So again, you have to read the manual uh, to figure out where your creative styles or picture profiles are located in your menus. But for me, there are two ways that you can access the creative styles. The first way is by going into the menu system of the camera and under the first tab, if you kind of pan over to page 12, there is a creative styles option there. And from there you can choose which creative profile you wanna use. The way that I typically use though, is I use the function key, which gives me my quick menus. And from there I can just get straight to the creative style there and access the, you know, the variety that are given to you by Sony. 
Now for me, I personally am a fan of the landscape creative style. Uh, I, I like the way it changes uh, the image. And you also have some additional refining options with each of these creative styles. So if you look, you can tab over and you have options to uh, increase or decrease the contrast, the saturation, and the sharpness. I tend to set all three of those to plus one when I'm shooting outdoor landscapes because uh, again, it gives me this really nice color boost. And I've actually done this on a recent shoot in the gorge. I was with a few friends and I showed them photos on the back of my screen with the creative style applied. And you can tell that it's like, why do these look so good? Now, again, if you are not shooting raw and you apply a creative style, your JPEG will have this kind of look baked in. That's it, that is kind of your baseline, which is why I recommend shooting RAW plus JPEG again. So when you import your photos into Lightroom, you'll get your JPEGs with the creative style applied, but the RAW will be untouched. It'll be as if uh, nothing was applied as is always the case when you shoot with RAW. And just to, as a reminder, again, if you are shooting RAW plus JPEG on a Sony camera and you send the photo over to your phone, a full resolution JPEG with that creative style will be applied. So just remember that if you want to apply some sort of filters afterwards, you don't want to overdo it. The other thing to remember is to keep in mind whether you have a creative style turned on. If you go from shoot to shoot and you don't remember whether you have a creative style turned on and you start shooting, uh, those images, those JPEGs might look weird. And incidentally, that is how Nicole started using her kind of picture profiles or creative styles can't remember what she was shooting, but uh, the point is uh, back when she was doing a lot of kind of portrait work for stock photography, it's customary as a portrait shooter or, you know, a wedding shooter to sometimes show your model or the subject, the photos on the back. And she found that when she would show the model the photos with the picture profile applied, it gave them more confidence, uh, which is something that's very important, especially if you're shooting models, you want them to have confidence so that they kind of emanate their best selves in front of the camera. So with that, again, I wanna know, what do you think? Have you used creative styles on your cameras? If so, leave them in the comments below. I wanna know which ones uh, you particularly like. I know that there are Fujifilm users out there who are particularly in love with specific uh, film simulation modes that they have. And it should, you know, goes without saying, Fujifilm uh, is quite masterful with how they make film. So it stands to reason that their simulation modes would be equally cool. So again, Leave your feedback in the comments below. I wanna know what you think. Is it something you can see yourself using if you've never done it before? If you like the video, please hit a thumbs up over here and please hit that subscribe button to get notifications on all new videos. All right, everyone, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next one. Later.